North Carolina at LSU. Marco, what should betters be thinking about? This game comes down to value and what I feel is an over-adjustment by the Vegas odd makers to the pending uh, suspensions around this game. Okay, so that's been the big talk with the game is these suspensions. My understanding is that we've got multiple players. How many players are we looking at? Upwards of 12. 12 players. It looks like they could be suspended formally by the NCAA, but even if not, if they're not suspended and they play, or let's say they play and are later suspended, they are going to forfeit this game. So it would seem to me the only way that North Carolina is going to play these players if they are almost 100% sure that there's going to be no suspensions. Now, that, that line, it's moved a ton, and you're going to talk about that, but just in the last 24 hours, it's moved from four to six? Four to six and a half, actually. Okay, which LSU was a favorite of, by four, now it's six and a half, which means it seems like the inside information is saying they're not going to play these players. It would look that way, and you're going to also get the wave of the public loves to jump on these type of things, too. They're going to grab LSU. So they're thinking, it's that old adage, they're thinking, hey, these guys are going to be suspended. Maybe Vegas doesn't know about this. But the fact is, usually there's an overreaction to this kind of thing where the public overestimates. Absolutely. And you being a guy, we've talked about this before, LSU, Saturday nights at Baton Rouge, that's a myth that it's like, you know, you're going to Death Valley, you can't win there. And it's actually a myth. Uh, and that's one of you the You get other... some stats to back that. That's well, a big claim. Well, it's a big claim. I'm going to go to Les Miles, the coach. In, in handicapping games, sometimes you look at coaching styles. He is not a guy that's a margin coach. His whole premise is get yourself to the fourth quarter and put yourself in position to win games. Now, at six and a half, it, now if this line was 11, I could see what you're saying. Even at six and a half, you're thinking because of the propensity to close games, those, those six and a half points are very valuable. Absolutely. In his, this is his sixth year there. He's got a 51 and 15 straight up record, but against the spread, he's only 25, 32, and seven. Okay, so that talks about against the spread in general, but you've seen, when, as you've dug deeper, is in, they play a lot of close games, thus laying upwards of a touchdown you don't like in general. I don't like it, and I'm actually I'm going to take a position on this game, even with the suspensions. I think this is going to be a low-scoring defensive game. I see it as a 17-16 type game. Now, is this, this is uh, your, we do, you do one best bet every week on the videos. Is this your best bet? We're going to go with it. Yes, we are. We're going to take North Carolina plus the points. I like Butch Davis as a, as a coach. He's got this program back on track. This is his fourth year there. They've gone to back-to-back -back bowl games. They brought back almost the entire team prior to the suspensions. This team was returning 19 of 22 starters, including the quarterback. All right, so I know you always believe that, and this is one of your pet theories, and I agree with it, is the first game after a, a loss of players oftentimes it's injuries, this time it's suspensions, is that the other players rise to the occasion, the, 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 the passion around, hey, we're not going to let this affect us, especially with a season with such high expectations with all the returners. That makes a ton of sense to me. Is that the main reason you're making this play? Is You see them rising to the occasion? I see them rising to the occasion. They've got a solid offense and a, a solid defense. Combine that with what I said the way uh, Les Miles coaches, it puts them in that they're going to be in this ball game. I think in the fourth quarter, and and you like the points. Now this game opened up like six weeks ago at LSU minus one. So we got five and a half points of value with the pit, you know, because of these pending and two and a half just in the last twenty four hours. hours. Yep. Okay. And all right, so now do you wait to, for this game to go to seven? This would be a situation that you're not going to lose anything by waiting because at worst, it's maybe going to come back down to six, so you're not losing any value. But if it does make that last push to seven, that half point that you gain is so you're right. Let's just say it's it's let's just say randomly though it, with the suspensions, the pressure seems to be moving up. So the odds are probably better than 50% to go to seven, but let's just say it was 50%. You're 50% of the time you're going to get onto a key number, 50% of the time, let's say 50% of the time that it moves. Oftentimes it's going to stay the same so you don't lose or gain anything. 
If it does go to seven, you gain a key number. If it goes to six, though six is a semi-key number, you lose less than you gain. So why not take the chance, especially with the momentum? Plus, even if it lands on six, you're not losing the bet. Yeah, that's a different way. That, that, that's a more complicated concept. But in, in general, I agree. So you're making your video best bet on North Carolina. You want to wait for the seven, but you're going to play it an hour before game time no matter what. Absolutely. Okay, good stuff. Now, now it's your turn. You can continue the conversation in the comments section, and Marco and I will actually answer all your questions and all your thoughts. Next up, we're going to be, what game we have next, Marco? We're going to come up with Boise State, Virginia Tech. It's a big game on Monday night. Next up, Boise State, Virginia Tech.